Bump this up a little bit. This is Mr. Mr. Annoying. Uh, I believe he's going to play Eva and some Junkrat. He's 2700, and as people said in chat, he's, uh, he's a PS, PS boy. And we're getting right into the action right now. Alright. Get hooked. I think... So first, I would say, uh... And I don't want to be nitpicky, but... You got hooked, and it looked like you were panicking, but your health was still fine. I think you could have got the Roadhog kill, depending on if you healed in time. But just because you get hooked, I know the... Um, the default action genius, is just like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, I'm getting killed. But actually look at your health and see if something's happening, because if you're over here getting hooked, like if the ho Roadhog's over here and he hooks you this way, uh, you know, your Reinhardt may have jumped up here and blocked all the damage. And so while you were hooked right here, uh, you may have been taking no damage at all and you could have killed the Roadhog while your team was doing their work. So just try to sit, stay observant. Is all I'm saying. My genius is finally recognized. Oh. Okay. Okay. There you go. Got him. That mercy. We're on soldier. More is behind us. My genius is finally recognized. Uh, you have hacks on, so you don't have to, like, try to be sneaky about it. Got their mercy. There you go. So, obviously it probably wasn't your most optimal play, uh, but shutting down one of the DPSers, especially when that keep on flanking. Uh, specifically at the lower SR ranks, soldiers that flank on your team can sometimes end the entire game. Uh, it just happens. So, good job there. Yeah, I don't mind it. Like, D.Va is actually this type of bruiser character that excels in one-on-ones. Uh, she's also good at just getting in front of things and busting the place open. So, you filled that role in one way. Most people would like to fill it by like, pushing everyone back and doing things there. But you did well. Okay. So at this point in time, the lines are being formed pretty harshly. Their team is going to defend there. Your team is going to defend here. Um, this is good, and but once you acknowledge that this part of combat is happening, this is when you alt as a diva up and over. I can't draw it like, uh, uh, like that. Essentially, as the lines are just about to stabilize, you throw in this thing that's going to unstabilize them. And since they're so far committed this way, you're trying to hit the nth degree, like the closest possible thing before they're all situated and they can deal with your team. Uh, right before they get to that point, you fuck it all up. Because this would make everyone rotate this way. Reinhardt would have to turn his shield or at least hide. I mean, it's just going to cause a lot of havoc at a very inopportune time for the enemy. Let's see how this goes out. Perfect. Your team didn't capitalize on it. And that fucking soldier. So, this is when I always say play against the hero and not the player. You need to take uh, player trends into account. And so this soldier... Soldiers are flanky creatures by nature. But this guy seems to want to, like, flank constantly. So if you lose sight of your... Of the soldier for a little bit of time, expect him to appear in a flank. I'm gonna get hooked. Bro, lost her. Oh, I would have had her killed too, bro. While you're at one, or you're at There you go. Perfect. Keep on putting pressure forward. You're the tank. Keep on putting pressure forward. You're the tank.
Okay. Three half. So as a diva, don't be afraid to just poke your head around the corner. And here's the thing. If they're sitting right here and they're looking to get pot shots on you, that is within dive distance. You actually want them to try to engage you when you turn that corner. Because the Winston was on the side and you can easily reach right here. And with your thrusters, you can easily reach right here. Essentially, if you went around that corner and they kept on fighting you and you kept on absorbing their damage for two seconds, it'd give you the perfect amount of time to dive in there and, and really get them while they're still respawning. Because uh, they did all die and they were... I think maybe one or two got away, but they're going to come back, you know, one at a time. If they come back at the same rate they uh, died. So they're not going to group up. Which sometimes teams don't do, and you got to take advantage of that. They have shattered. They're trying to shatter. Okay. Come on, boys. Go on. Come on. He's weak. He's weak. Yeah. They're just there. So I got to go. Watch for that soldier. Okay, that was good. Okay, you're getting, you're getting your max back. You can't DM a May left click. Um, right, but at that distance, May's left click won't get you. Behind you. So it looked like he was hiding there from the beginning. Uh, it looks like it's not paying off for him though. So he did get one kill, but he couldn't follow up. He was so deep that he just died, and then it's a five v five anyways. So if anyone doesn't get that, it's why these deep flanks don't work unless you get a lot of kills. Alright, you got a Widow, that's a good pick. So without what I said before, and I just want to reiterate because it's really important, people will do these super long flanks, and then they'll get like one kill and then they'll die because they're so deep in. It's not worth it because you just made it a 5v5, and unless you got a really valuable pick, uh, you're usually a DPS which is quite damn valuable. Um, it's usually not worth it. And that's what happened to that McCree. He, uh, he flanked. Yeah, he got one, but he died as well. It's a wash. So right here, you're a little bit too far away, and unless you're specifically trying to put pressure on the Widow... Okay, so... Um, about that positioning. You were so far away, you weren't really doing any damage of anything. Um. Yeah, it, it, you weren't, you had nothing really affected there. Maybe I thought you were, like, trying to prepare for the Widow. But you could have easily stood on this line. And then thrust her up behind you when the Widow grappled. Uh, you can also thrust her up right up there. So I just, uh, positioning is a little bit too safe. You weren't really, uh, affecting anything there. Now we got the old Junker. Old Junk Rat. Already, this positioning is very greedy. Um, if they just push straight in like teams always do, you're going to get cut off and you're probably going to die. Okay. Thank you. Okay. My my statement still stands. Super greasy, greedy side. down here. Oh, I did. They're all there. They're all coming. All coming down the middle. Right Look for that bastion to rotate in. Nice. Right hearts one, guys. On point. We need a mercy pick now. Ten 
coming from my own. So, okay. My God. Nice. There you go. So, you missed your shots, but Tyre did not miss. So you did a good job there. Again, you're horrendously deep. And you're playing on the far side, which is inherently risky. So, as you get to higher and higher ranks, I wouldn't expect that stuff to work out. And I expect you just to straight up die. You need to get out of there. Uh, you're just going to die in the middle of the point. Yeah. Let's see if you can get bailed out. Here comes the Sunbrawl. No. Okay. There's probably a teleporter right next to you. Hold on. I couldn't hear it. Alright, all those shots you need to get... Alright, alright. You're gonna tire and try to be a hero? Alright. So overall, way too much playing in the mid. I know your team bailed you out, but... You're just shots. It's very, very simple. The enemy. Hold on. We got maps for this stuff. We got maps for this. Let's take a look here. Just, come on, Mike. Get out of my way. So here's the first point. Everyone's coming through this lane or this lane. And you're kind of sitting here, or here, or here. Uh, and then you're chilling up here for a while. Like, the best way to deal with this is shoot down the lane. Like, if they're going in a straight line, shoot down with it. If they're going that way, shoot like this. Uh, the problem is, is your shot's over here, like, because everyone is around you, you're shooting this way, shooting that way, trying to shoot that way, shoot that way. Yeah. There's little chance you're going to hit all these people. From positioning alone, it's just poor, poor positioning. You're on point. Everyone's surrounding you. Uh, you're trying to hit whoever you can, and I get it. At this SR on, you know, council, you can get away with that stuff. But it, and if they had half a mind, they would put you down to the ground immediately. So watch your positioning. Don't get in the middle of everything. Try to find a lane and shut it down. Oh, Don't sit in the middle of the point and shoot all around you. Put everything in front of you. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, if you have that Bastion, that would be good. That Bastion just died. Oh, cool. You want to grab Bastion? Well, they don't have a shield tank. So Resolution? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're watching a video on YouTube. We're helping some guy out. I don't need 1080p's to make fun of someone and help them out. You had the mercy, just take what is given to you. Going for the health? Now, I don't know if this is a conscious decision, but because so many people are dead, this is why it's working. Get it out of there. Alright. Risky plays, risky plays, but you made it out. Uh, again, just don't even drop there. Uh, flanking again. So, overall, you're flanking a bit too much. I mean, I get you're getting these kills, you're getting these these things happening, but... The only reason this is working is because your team is winning the main fight 5v6. You went for the enemy health, but didn't think about uh, how I went into the enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I say you just go DPS again. Uh, understand that 75 health won't last long against six heroes. 
It won't last long against one hero. Okay. So. This is weird. As soon as you see that corridor, shoot down it. Alright, you already... Shoot here. Immediately. You could have put three shots into that corridor. Because... Well, you, you you believe someone's down there anyways. Why not put shots down it? If you get sound cues, you know someone's down it. Um. Uh, three, two, one. Yeah, so that's just a strange decision. Uh, also, this diva's doing what you want her, or you're doing exactly what the diva wants you to do. You're paying, you're giving attention to her. You're not even worried about the main point. Uh, unless you're going up there yourself and taking out the diva, don't worry too much about her. Uh, because she has full support from her team over here. Right, her, her whole team's supporting her right here. They have line of sight on her. So instead of just trying to fuck with the D.Va and paying all your attention this way, figure out what's going out this way. Okay, so you went up there. Good. But, support from the team. So you grab. Okay. I feel like because I lived, I could do it again. Uh, no. You're just overflanking. Flank for a reason. You don't flank because you can flank. So you haven't used trap at all? It's been a good 20 seconds since the trap. There you go. Never mind, she's with her team. I think, yeah, I think that Reinhardt is here, too. So personally, I like the trap up here because a lot of people won't look up there. So again, you're trying a little bit of a Trixie spot, and it didn't pay off. Um, good fundamentals beats the Trixie stuff. Alright. Uh, instead of hooking and doing nothing, just heal. By time. Understand what your priorities are when you're going out. Oh, and your priority was to stall for time. No, we have plenty of damage. They're gonna, gonna go, they're gonna go Bastion again. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, uh, oh. Are you gonna, you're gonna be on this cross side, aren't you? Like, I really do hope you die here. This isn't bad. Now this spot's a lot better than on the other side. You could have grabbed that health right there. Trap. Okay, so accuracy is definitely something you need to work on. At this point in time. Okay, okay, okay. So even before this, your team, you're essentially separated from your team. They were pushing in. I, I didn't even have to see, but I guarantee this is what happened. You're over here. Your team's over here now. And they put pressure right here. You're essentially separated from your team. Uh, at this point, I was like, oh, you need to go back. Even before this is about to happen, I was like, yeah, if you walk forward anymore, you're, you're done for. Uh, now, I know this is probably unintentional because you didn't notice any of this happening, but once this happens, going this way is now suicide. Once that door shuts, it's gone. It's just straight up gone. So what you need to do is you need to flank and exactly do what you're doing and trying to get the mercy. Uh, the other option is to be, if you see one kill or two kills, 
and you can't get a direct flank, then you would actually go up here and just be annoying as shit. Uh, essentially, you want to harass them from multiple angles, because they're in a numbers disadvantage. And if they're, you're harassing them from way back there, they don't have the numbers to actually deal with you. So it's just going to cause them to die. It, it's a little bit slower of a kill, but it, it works out a lot better. So, you did the right thing here. Let's see if you can hit your shots. Now remember, she was healing someone. Get out. You have to get out of here. You need to get out. Okay, you finally got out. Just tie her in the corridor. Tie her in the corridor. Get the health? I would've got the health packet. Oh my god, you almost died. One round. That fair is gonna be a big problem for you guys, I think. Or the junk rat. I'm staying behind them, I also 80. That's already making a bad move. You're not gonna get 20% alt from behind them doing nothing. Uh, and this is really dangerous from you. No, Ryan, Ryan, where are you? Oh, the Reinhardt. Oh, shit. I got the di guy dives in. Totally bad move. Don't worry, guys, they're distracted by me. You were alone over there. Uh, again, you flanked. And you flanked and you flanked deep. Oh, I'm dead. Mercy came here, sorry, Raz. So I can already tell you. Never mind, no, don't, no, sorry, he's dead. Sorry, yeah. Uh. Just get out and run back out. You probably know what you need to fix. Or what I've just been talking about. We can't let them get the Uh, Mr. Beboop asked a question Does Tyre get affected by armor? Yes. Yes, you are correct. Diva will ne a full health Diva will never die to tire. No, this is terrible. Oh, I guess you get two. So I'll just tell you this in a higher ELO. That tire is done. I'll show your attack is. I got my same class. Okay. This you have to kill. Oh, that hurts. Okay, so instead of actually killing him, that he almost got away, you decided to taunt. Which is one of the stupidest fucking things you could ever do. So, you know there's a bunch of sim turrets around you, because there's a sim. Right, they're probably right below you. Yep, they are. What you need to do is dash through, just get to a safe place, and turn around and shoot them. So they'll have one hit point. Get these turrets on the left. Uh, a little bit too much attention on the trap. Unsh Why are you backing up? Oh, they got a Hanzo. So, actually, dive in there. Uh... Okay, your accuracy is definitely something you gotta work on. Actually, I wouldn't even say your accuracy, just keeping the enemy in your point of view is a really big hindrance for you.
Good ult. I hope so. I think so. Yeah. I've grabbed, I've grabbed next fight. Um, you played D.Va a bit passively. And I don't know if it's because you have... Um... Just not that good of accuracy with tracking on her. Or maybe you feel like she doesn't do a lot of damage. Uh... But you definitely play her passively. Okay, okay. Shoot someone else. That was a res. I think I rezzed. Dead. Fuck! Stay on point, guys. One good on point. Touch. Touch, touch, touch. It's good, it's good. Oh, dude, you're about to die. Or if they're using it. Uh-oh, alright. They got you. So, I think you're doing alright there, but again, you weren't... So, again, D.Va... So the payload is right here, and it's okay to be in the middle, because they have some enemies around you, but again, this isn't the most effective way to use defensive matrix, right? Because you're only going to look maybe this way, or that way, or this way, or that way. Again, you kind of jump in the middle of stuff, and, and it's kind of what tanks do, but it's better if like you're just right there, or right here, and then you defensive matrix this way. And you get two turns. Or you're here in your defensive matrix this way. And you get any target here going that way and these three directly in front of you. Um, yeah, you're not using these lanes that are created in the game. You're just kind of looking at a target. You're, you're like when a little child plays soccer. And I don't know if anyone's ever watched children playing soccer. But what they do is if there's 11 kids, and I'll just draw a whole bunch of X's, and the ball is here. Everyone goes for the fucking ball. They just run at the ball. They just go get the ball. Right? And that's kind of what you're doing. Every time you see someone, you're just kind of like looking at them, and that's it. And then you look at them, and you're like, oh, go that way. Oh, go that way. Uh, you just have this thing of just like, you see something, and then you just walk towards it, and you start dealing with that person. Which is... Like, I understand at lower levels, that's just how people learn to play, but acknowledge that you, you've been doing that and try to fix that. Uh, you have to deal with like the larger group picture instead of just the individual targets. And, and don't forget the individual targets are important. Uh, there's a principle in uh, Aikido that I did long, long ago. 10, maybe about 15 years ago. Um, and it was like, treat the many as one, treat the one as many. And it's kind of like this, oh, Taoist, oh man, what, what a profound statement. But it's actually really important when it comes to combat because it, it's important to know that the enemy team is going to try to act as one. So you have to try to te teach the or try to attack the enemy if they're all as one unit. So that's what I mean by like, oh, if you're here, then you can you know disable three targets. At the same time, you do you have to treat you know the many as one. As in, this character is doing one thing, this character is doing one thing, this character is doing, like they're all doing their individual tasks. And you have to respect them for that and uh, treat them, uh, you know, for what they need to be for whatever task they do. At the same time, you have to treat the whole group as, you know, a group. Um, it's a conundrum. I don't even think it's a conundrum, but yeah, it's it's a bit of a circular argument. But once you get the idea of it and like, start applying it, it really helps. Uh, so now that we're here, give me my red. Uh, so I will just say accuracy needs to go up. Uh, specifically tracking. Well, you know what? I won't even say tracking. Everything. Uh, I mean, your drunk rat shots were off. Your tracking was off. It just... It, it seems just like... You need to grasp the game more. Which isn't a bad thing. It just means you're playing it at, at a low ELO. Um, positioning. We went over this a bit. Use the lanes that appear in the game. Uh, or stop 
being in the middle of things. Stop middle. Remember, this is almost like World War, not even that, like Civil War type shit. Actually, the Revolutionary War type shit. Both teams, honestly, there's like this agreement where both teams line up like this and they shoot at each other. This is what happens. Every every game, in more one way or another, lines are drawn, teams get you know in their ranks and they shoot at each other. That's it. Uh, the place you don't want to be is here. Or when actual combat starts and the enemy has advanced, or part of them had advanced, and then you're just like in the middle and you have people all around you, don't be there. Don't be there at all. That That's where you're just going to get shot up horrendously from behind. Uh, we'll just say trap more. Oh, of course, the other one. Stop flanking so damn much. It's okay to flank. I get it. It works. Sometimes it works. Sometimes you lose the entire game because of it. Uh, you're overflanking. I should say stop overflanking, not just stop flanking in general. You are flanking horrendous amounts of time. Your team is losing within that time, and then you're like, oh, well, it's just a 1v6. What am I going to do? Guess my t I hope my team didn't die in that 30 seconds I was, you know, flanking, and they were taking a 5v6. Uh, you got to stop flanking. Remember, when you do something, do it for a reason. If you're going to flank, flank for a reason. But do not flank if there is combat going on. If these guys are fighting and you're like, I'll just flank like this. By the time you get back, the decision has already been done, whether you win or you lose. But I will tell you this, you had no input on whether you win or lost. Uh, so it doesn't matter if your team did something or if your team did not do something. Uh, you had no effect. Uh, logistics, trap more. Oh, also positioning with Diva. Uh, we talked about it, just... Get up in people's faces, but don't overcommit. Um, stop playing greedy. It has to do with flanking, but even your like defensive play is like you're greedy. Like your team is here, and you're like you're still trying to flank just a little. Ah, right, right, oh, right there, I'll get there. Uh, at the higher the ELOs, this little sliver you see between you and the line—that's what kills you and loses the game. Uh, so fix that now instead of doing that later. Better to be over here or over here. Uh, and then you can just step across this line and then you can flank when, you know, it, it appears you can. Uh, that's about it. I think your information's fine. Um, I, we briefly talked about information. Like, with D.Va, you can bully people pretty hard. And even long range, you can just kind of get into the mix of things. You can, like, stick your head out. Get some like if they take some shots at you, just absorb it, and that forces them to commit on the corner. So like we're looking at that one, the corner phase of King's Row. Like a lot of them died. They want to retreat. They want to retreat so they can meet back up. But if you pop your head up around this corner and they're like, "Oh wait a second, fuck you, Diva," and they sit here for two extra seconds shooting you and getting nothing done, that means your team had two seconds to get around and to kill them. Right? And that took their 20 to 30 seconds, or for their 10 to 15 second stagger to, all right, now it's a 30 to 45 second uh, uh, stagger. Because you essentially more or less baited them in. Um, and I think that's it. I know you're in chat. Do you have any questions? If there's one thing you need to fix is your positioning. Stop flanking. Stop sitting in the middle of everyone. Get to a point where you can see everyone that's doing everything and then deal with it from there. If you flank, you want to have a damn answer or a, a damn reason to. Anything? How valuable is demacking a diva? If you're speak for some reason, I want to say you're thinking, is it okay to use tire on diva? If she is hurt, yes, diva has 600, 400 health, 200 armor. Your tire does 600 damage. That means she takes 595 damage. If there's nothing up to follow five damage, don't tire her. 
If there is, then yes, do it. You feel like that you focus on that too much over other things. Uh, again, the idea is don't focus on any one thing. If Diva wants to give you her mech, do it. But don't overextend and die. Always prioritize survival, uh, survivability over everything else. Unless something crazy happens and you do have to sacrifice yourself to get something done. Sometimes that's worth it, but when you're playing at the basic level, don't fucking do that. I'd rather have you develop good fundamentals rather than, oh yeah, every now and then I suicide just trying to get something good. And you're just like, ah, well, you, you don't want, like, it. when you do that, it needs to be a conscious thought process on why you do that. And not just like, fuck it, I'm going to kill myself to get a pick. As a 5v5, I did my part. The team needs to do their part. Don't think like that. Any other questions? About trapping more, how well can an enemy hear a trap being deployed? You, my friend, ask a really good question. You think you're good? That's good. I'll go back to that question, Blue Moose question. But Silverflam says, you're 1v1 in D.Va and you need back her. Should you kill her or just leave her like that and return to your team? Um, I like removing variables completely. That's just me, though. Some people will say, yeah, leave, let her stay alive. And if she's like, if it's like a 2 CP and you demect her like midfield, I would let her live. But sometimes D divas can get things done in mini form. I've seen pro matches won and lost by mini divas. So I like to remove variables. Get that shit out of here. Be done with it. Don't got to think about it. Don't got to make any other questions. Just, she's dead. Don't worry about it. Because the last thing you need is. Diva getting her mech, like, on a flank, and all of a sudden she's behind you with a diva bomb. And you're like, man, I wish I would have just killed her. Uh, I guess a good rule of thumb would be to... If the diva... It's, a, it's an attack at logistics. If the amount of space she has to travel is, like, more of an issue for her killer. If she's on the flank and you're letting her live and you're saving her time by keeping her alive, I would I would kill her. 